Taking a look at a new release from Titleist in the golf ball segment, this is their Tour Speed Golf Ball. Now for me personally, this is probably the most interesting non-Pro V, Pro V1X release from Titleist. Uh, and I say that not as a slight to the AVX, which was a big deal for them to add a third urethane golf ball to the market. Um, but the AVX is aimed at a very, very slim margin of golfers, if we're being honest. Um, the Tour Speed, however, is aimed at probably the biggest segment of golfers, those that are looking for more distance in the long irons but still want to maintain control in the scoring clubs. With that is the overall design. This is a $39.99 golf ball from Titleist. With that, if I were to just tell you those things, you'd be like, okay, so we've seen a $39.99 golf ball from Titleist before, and we have. The difference is, this is a urethane golf ball that's coming in at $39.99. And this one makes four urethane golf balls within the Titleist lineup, and that is worth talking about. Not only is it worth talking about because we're starting to see Titleist branch out from that Pro V1, Pro V1X fits everybody uh, mentality and, and message that we've heard over the years, which isn't necessarily wrong, but they're obviously adapting to the way the market has moved in that we understand now with technology, we can fine tune and make offerings for everybody across the gamut to hit the needs of the majority, not just small groups like tour players and say that that's for everybody. The tour speed is actually the golf ball that in my opinion is going to be aimed at the biggest part of golfers. It's probably going to be the one that should appeal to the most. Um, now, we're going to break down the golf ball itself and what's going on technology-wise, obviously, uh, but I've also been fortunate enough to already have these in hand and to put them to work. So we're also going to go over some Foresight GC2 data that I recorded on them, and I also want to take time to mention now that if you haven't already, this video is going up at the same time as our release and review of the Turf Speed Golf Ball. So if you haven't gone over to the homepage at THP and checked that out, please go ahead and do that uh, and let us know what you think. Now. For the purpose of the video and what's going on here, I do want to point out something with the golf ball. Not that it's a Titleist golf ball, because we know that, but to me, one of the things I've always noticed the most going from a Pro V1, Pro V1X, or even an AVX, to, say, the Tour Soft, and holding them in hand. Obviously, the feel of the cover is different. Here, with it, you being a urethane cover, you get that feel underneath your fingernail if you're one of the people who do the fingernail test. Uh, but more than that, the quality of the script, and I don't want to say quality, the sharpness of the script would be a better way to put it. The classic title of script is always a little bit cleaner uh, whenever it's on one of these urethane upper level, top level golf balls from Titleist. Uh, that's not to say they cut corners on anything else at all, but the urethane versus ionomer, I think to my eye, really makes it possible to be a little bit more finite. And this looks like a top notch, top quality golf ball. This, is, this looks like a top tier urethane Titleist golf ball whenever you hold it in hand and you hold it next to any of those other offerings. Something that is different from those and definitely helps differentiate the golf ball is this alignment aid. As you see right here, the Tour Speed alignment aid is what I would call a multi arrow design. Uh, in the middle of it, you have a bright blue Tour Speed, and this is about 100 times busier than anything you get on the Pro V1, Pro V1X, or even the AVX. And to be real, with who it's aimed at, with golfers that are more likely to use an alignment aid in their putting, um, it makes sense to be a little bit busier. Plus, again, I think it differentiates this golf ball more from that Pro V, Pro V1X, because even though we're seeing Titleist begin to branch out, I think it's going to be an interesting road to watch them walk about how they are balancing this new fourth urethane golf ball versus uh, the, the stories and, and the beliefs that they've always given us over, well, multiple decades of what the Pro V1 and the Pro V1X are. Hitting this $39.99 price point, though, with a urethane cover should perk up some ears. Now, the golf ball itself is a three-piece design. Uh, internally, you have a high-speed core, as Titleist calls it, and that's going to be followed by an ionomer casing. The ionomer casing is a Titleist-specific design uh, for this golf ball in order to try to create a low-spin uh, maximum speed generation in the long game. Um, when you do that, and we've seen them do that before with some of their non-urethane offerings in the past, uh, there's always something that's give and take. 
if you just focus on low spin and speed, you can create a heck of a golf ball off of the tee, but you begin to lack as you go into the greens. Uh, so to answer that, this does, like we've mentioned, have a urethane cover on it. And a matter of fact, it is what they call their TPU cover, a thermoplastic urethane that was designed specifically for this golf ball. This cover was created to work with the Tour Speed golf ball in order to try to give us more scoring control, I think would be the best word to use with it. It also has a 346 quadrilateral die pyramid dimple design and yes I actually managed to say that right which means in their words a flatter and more consistent ball flight throughout the bag with this golf ball um, I managed like I said I worked with it on the Foresight GC2 launch monitor um, but I did things a little bit differently instead of just throwing some driver numbers at you and some lob wedge numbers at you that are on the extremes I really wanted to focus in on what's kind of the marketing line, if you will, with the Tour Speed, and that's that the Tour Speed golf ball is a quote unquote unique combination of exceptional distance in long game and precise short game scoring control. Basically, it's the golden goose, if you will, based on those things. Uh, a golf ball that's going to travel further and generate more speed uh, off of the tee and in long shots, and one that's still going to offer you control into the greens. It's the golf ball that the majority of golfers in the bell curve probably need. And that's why this $39.99 segment is so crowded now. That's why we're seeing so many golf balls do so well there. Most golfers don't want to go out and pay $50 a dozen for golf balls. So that $39.99 market's become hyper competitive. And this is, in my opinion, probably Titleist's answer to sitting back and watching the Q-Star Tours and some of the others establish a foothold where they believe that they can create something that is equal to, if not better. And based on their testing, they believe that the Tour Speed is better at creating overall speed and distance than some big-name golf balls. They've thrown them out by name without any fear of it in the likes of the Z-Star, the Q-Star Tour, the Bridgestone B their Tour BRX, the Chrome Soft. Like I said, some big names. So to test this and to touch that catchphrase, instead of just going driver wedge, I decided to focus on irons because within the irons, using a 5-iron, a 7-iron, and a 9-iron, I really felt like that we could get the broadest margin of what's going on from the long game to the short game. So as you look at the screen and we put up the data of what I recorded on here, uh, using these specific clubs, uh, I wanted to see just what was going to happen. Uh, focusing first on the 9-iron, if you will, uh, the 9-iron put up about 7,200 RPMs of spin, 22.7 degrees of launch, 36-yard uh, peak, which I'm traditionally a mid-ball hitter. Uh, a mid-ball hitter that tends to be on the lower spin side of things. So while 7,200 RPMs with some of these shots dipping into the 6,000s isn't going to be all that high for some of you and what you're looking at, uh, for me, it's kind of a normal realm of things. Uh, as you move into the 7 iron, though, we noticed a spin drop as I hit into the 5,800 realm on average with a, a peak of 6,400 and the lowest coming in at about 5,300. But the launch angle stayed up and the peak height stayed around 37 yards, which for me, that's pretty big, and that's, that's going to allow for a lot of maximum carry. As you move into the five iron though, the spin gets its lowest naturally, but it dips a lot more than what I expected. Coming in at a 41.57 average, 35 yards peak still, and about 132 mile an hour of average ball speed. What all this means in the picture of things is just looking at that data, the tour speed does what Titleist says it does. In order to really get a feel for how much that, that sits in the market though, you would want to run out and compare it to a whole bunch of things. I didn't think it was fair for this to compare the tour speed to all of these other golf balls. Instead, I wanted to compare the tour speed a little bit to other Titleist offerings. So I took the Tour Soft Golf Ball, which is an ionomer design that is somewhat similar to the Tour Speed, as well as the Pro V1 and Pro V1X, and got a few little samples of data that I'm not going to put up on the screen here, but instead we're just going to talk about. Basically, with the Tour Soft, I saw almost identical numbers in the long irons, uh, meaning they creates as much speed, it creates that low spin, it's going to maximize overall distance, depending on your swing and your skill level. Uh, as it moved into the 7-iron, the numbers began to separate. As I moved into the 9-iron, the tour speed actually managed to generate 500 RPMs higher on average in a 9-iron into greens. That's a massive difference as far as control, as far as shot shaping, and as far as not only hitting a surface, but holding a surface. Um, that's going to make a golf ball do a lot more of what you want it to. 
So it's no surprise that this one uh, differentiated itself from the Tour Soft. It should have. Comparing it to the Pro V1, Pro V1X, I was really eager to see what would happen. And what I found was the Tour Speed set itself just below the Pro V1, Pro V1X in all categories. The four, or the five iron, the seven iron, and the nine iron spin came in lower. Um, Ball speeds were a little bit different for me, but that could also be a swing speed situation. Because as always, we always tell you guys, and we really do mean it, you need to go out and you need to try the things that are going to work best for your game. My swing is not your swing, your swing is not my swing. But it's still good to be able to look at the overall picture of what's going on performance-wise, especially compared to marketing. It's a brave new world for Titleist. It's going to be an interesting road to watch them walk and see how not only this golf ball does with amateurs, but how it's going to be accepted amongst the stories and, and, and the mission statement that we've always heard from Titleist in regards to the Pro V1 and the Pro V1X. For me, the AVX is an outlier. It was always kind of a niche product, but this this one is aiming at the biggest portion of the bell curve. This is the golf ball that could arguably uh, perk the most ears. So if you're going to go out, if you happen to go out and you grab a dozen, you grab a sleeve and you put them out on the course, uh, be sure to give us our feedback. Leave your feedback on this video. Leave your feedback on the THP forum. Be sure to check out the article on the THP homepage and let us know what you think there. Always jump in the conversation because we're here for the conversation with you. Uh, if you like this video, please give us a like. If you haven't already, go ahead and subscribe to THP TV. We've got a lot of things on there right now. We have got a whole lot more coming.